Hey everyone and welcome back. My name is Sam. I grew up in the FLDS uh, religion community run by Warren Jeffs and moved out when I was 18 years old. My name is Melissa. I was raised LDS and Sam and I have been married for seven and a half years now. Yeah, we time wanted, flies. Yes. <laughs> Today's video we're going to be talking about, I think I had mentioned before that we had gotten a lot of the documents of um, from our sweet sister-in-law about some of the proclamations that Warren Jeffs had written. Yeah. And a, lot of, a lot of interesting and uh, weird yeah. <laughs> things. Well, it's that... funny because when I grabbed this one, I was like, oh, let's do a proclamation to the government officials of the United States of America and to the government officials of Canada. And what was the first thing you said? I said, oh, I believe that was what he wrote to the government officials while in prison. And uh, this was his way of trying to convince them to let him free. Yeah. So that's this, the first thing that popped into my head is a memory of, oh, this actually is something I remember. Um, so as far as I know, I haven't read this recently or anything, but I believe that's what it's all about. Yeah, and this was written, it looks like, uh, Friday, October 2nd of 2009. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, he was definitely in prison. And so there was just um, two pages, one his proclamation to the government, and then the, the other one was the revelation of the Lord given to President Warren S. Jeffs. So we thought we would just read through it, honestly, rather than kind of pick it apart. Just that way you can hear the way he was speaking to the, the uh, government, and then also what a typical revelation from Warren Jeffs sounds like. So we're so, going to... Here we go. Let's, <laughs> so here let's we go. See. We'll kind of, I'll just start reading it and then we'll kind of pause yeah, we'll and give our take on it. But on. inasmuch as government officials have joined with those who were once members of Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, who are now apostate and determined to destroy the church. <laughs> so even just that, for those of you who are new to our channel, an apostate is anybody who has left what they believe to be the truth. So Correct. all of the mainstream LDS church and um you know all those people would be considered apostates or the people originally that broke right. off you know they would they would say or he would say warren jeffs would say that the lds church as a whole is an apostate church but not not that every person uh, you know every member of the church is apostate necessarily but the but anyway he's just saying that the church the lds church he believes has fallen away yeah and the the mainstream LDS church believes that the FLDS split off from the truth, and the FLDS church believes that the LDS are the ones who right. split off. So, right. yep. little bit of he said, she said, <clears throat> or he said, he said. Um, and in as much as these government officials are now bringing prosecutions upon members of the said church, I have fought to use church rec and have fought to use church records to persecute and prosecute members of said church. And inasmuch as our religious freedoms are not upheld by these government officials, even to incarcerate them for performing their religious duties and living the revealed laws of their religion as given through the prophet Joseph Smith, we declare the warning of the Lord Jesus Christ, whom we serve, that all those who thus stretch forth their hands to bring prosecution and persecution upon his church and use his sacred records to bring unjust and, and attacks upon his people, he, the Lord, will send his judgments upon them, that they may know they are fighting against his church and kingdom on earth. That's a very long sentence. Whoa. Yes. Yeah. So there's a lot. There's a lot in that. So I believe he said something about using past documents and things and church records against them. Right. So yeah, I remember that this is something that we would be told out there as well. That you know the the government and the the people working against God's church uh, would use. Uh, documents and the words of the people and twist them in a way that would uh, fabricate what they're actually saying and, and make it sound like it's something else. And so that's one of the ways that they would convince us to not believe anything that was told to us from the outside world because they would say, oh, it's all been fabricated. So even the people that, I mean, for me, I'll take myself for example, when Warren Jeffs was put in prison, I believed... I. 100% that he was wrongly incarcerated and that everything that they said negatively about him at that time, I believed was a fabricated lie. And that's just because of, for, of this way of, of teaching that, hey, they're going to use this information, our documents, our history, and twist it in a way that makes it look bad. Yeah, and for those of you who haven't seen our interview with Shem Fisher, mm -hmm. we'll link it up above. Yeah. Um, but he talks specifically about the fact that 
people that were higher up in the church and realized what Warren Jeffs were was doing, mm-hmm. um, they did use the documents. They knew where to look. They knew where yep. to point and direct the government and the FBI and say, listen, you should look in these documents. So when he says, you know, their church records are being used against them, they absolutely were for good reason. Right. But that's what he's hooting and hollering about. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, exactly. Because that's that exactly what they were using in the courts, in the court of law to, against him is, hey, this is these are the things that were happening. These are the things that were documented. And so there was proof of it. Yep. Yeah. And... Also, you'll kind of notice that like the way that he talks sounds a lot like the King James Version of the Bible. Mm-hmm. And that was very, very common, right? For the prophets to speak like right. when they're declaring things or, yeah, or using like proclamations and stuff. Was that pretty typical that they would sound like the Bible, like scripturally? They definitely all had their way of speaking because they they all read the scriptures, the the, the King James version of the Bible and the, the other uh, you know Book of, Mormon. Book of Mormon doctrine covenants those things they were very well versed in in those scriptures, so they did all have kind of this a similar manner of speaking, but Warren Jeff specifically had a had a he had this odd tone to his voice that made it even. Um, that much more convincing when you believed in it, but now looking back, it makes it uh, listening to his voice now. It just it, it it's almost creepy the way he talks, and that, you know. So he has a very unique way of talking, and he's a very good um, public speaker. He was we'll have to do some on like the way that he talks, and you had told me before that like he could stand at the pulpit and like give speeches off mm-hmm. the cuff and. Yep. All the time, yeah. He would he would stand up and give very convincing speeches, without really anything in front of him. He would just stand up and and start talking. So yeah, which was a testament to the people that he was receiving revelation, revelation yeah. from from God. And and at times he would even pause and kind of look down at the pulpit for a while and and not say anything and then and then began speaking again. Obviously now I believe he just didn't know what to say and he took it some time to to try to pull his thoughts together but uh, I was told and I don't remember if it was my mother that told me or if it was my father or who it was but someone told me that when he was looking down he was praying to get that guidance and that revelation from God so that he would only speak what what uh, he was supposed to that's that's what I was told yeah so interesting yeah and we give his warning and by his he's meaning that um, Jesus Christ um, yeah Mm -hmm. Because this revelation would have come through Jesus Christ. So whenever he says like his church, his kingdom, his warning, he's referring to Jesus Christ. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. That's what he's, he's claiming. (laughs) Yeah. And we give his warning and not of man as he has thus directed us, his servants. And let all be warned that the Lord Jesus Christ, who created all things, who sees and knows all things and has all power, shall fulfill his word. This through his servants who only seek the salvation of all men unto the glory of God. So, I mean, that sounds like a very typical thing for a leader of just about any Christian church to say, Mm -hmm. um, you know, that he's just a servant. And when you actually find out what he (laughs) is put in prison for um, beyond like even just the church stuff, but, you know, child brides and even molesting his own family and abuse. It's just crazy that he could even try to claim this. Like, I I don't know if if he had some kind of mental illness or or something, but he sure seemed, for the times that I met him and and listening to him speak, he sure seemed 100% convinced that he was speaking for God. I mean, it's kind of crazy how convinced he had people. Yeah. We, the quorum of the First Presidency of the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, send to this nation and generation his warning, even a revelation of God to you, along with his revealed word through his prophet Joseph Smith Jr. and other prophets, including his own words. So, to kind of break that down, when they talk about the quorum of the First Presidency, do you want to explain what that is? Well, so... (laughs) In, in the in the LDS Church, there's the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles and the First Presidency. Um, in the FLDS Church, growing up, I honestly could not tell you if there were Twelve Apostles and if there were, who they were. 
It wasn't oh. something that was as obvious. Maybe there were 12 that they uh, claimed to be, to be apostles. I'm not sure. But, uh, I, but the first presidency was very much... And he says the quorum of the first presidency, The right? quorum of the first presidency, yeah. So I'm not sure what he means by that, to be honest. I, I know that there were uh, the, the, the prophet and then there were the counselors to the prophet. And there's two counselors. There's the first counselor right. and the second counselor. And that same in the LDS. Mm -hmm. There's a prophet and then a first counselor and a second counselor. So I, I'm guessing that's what he's referring to is that those three men. And then there were a lot of other leaders that were had high callings in the church as well. But I don't remember people being referred to as apostles. So. Oh, that's an interesting distinction because mm -hmm. the LDS church, they have the, the uh, first presidency and then they do have the quorum of the 12 apostles. And maybe that maybe there were men that were considered apostles out there. It just they obviously didn't talk enough about it to where I remember or could tell you who they were. Or yeah, and in so. the LDS church, like everybody knows yeah, who they it's very are. It's very clear, public, very, very clear. obvious, yes. Yeah. Um, and we do this with soberness, with great yearnings unto God for the salvation of the souls of all men and their families and peoples of the earth. For the Lord is God and he shall fulfill all his words. And he lieth not, but is a God of truth. And this is our testimony to this generation that the Lord will fulfill all his words revealed through all his holy prophets. So when he's talking about this, he's talking about, so, um, he's talking about the prophets of in the Bible, mm -hmm. and he is also talking about prophets within um, the Book of Mormon. Modern day as well. And yeah. modern day. Yeah. So for the FLDS, that lineage goes from, you know, the beginning at Joseph Smith Jr. and then continues on through the FLDS prophet lineage. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously the one that leads to Warren Jeffs because there are which, many as well. Which split off at, at the time of, of Wilford Woodruff. That's when, that's when they... Started a different, a different line of prophets. Yep. And I think he mentions that. Oh, one. does he? Um, and this is our testimony to this generation, that the Lord will fulfill all his words revealed oh, through his holy prophets. And with fear and trembling before him, we uphold all his words and seek his grace to attend the honest in heart of all nations to prepare for the great day of the Lord. <clears throat> what, do they, what do they mean when you would say, like, to prepare for the great day of the Lord? <laughs> It, it seems like <laughs> we were constantly told that the end was coming. And so this, I mean, there were set, there were more than just one. There were a couple dates that were set that, that, that we were told was going to be okay. second coming of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he would come and there would be destruction and wars and earthquakes and, and you name it, everything that you can think of as far as natural disasters on top of that wars and we were told that certain countries were, were going to come in and attack and try to take over um, the the small town of Hilldale in Colorado City because they were God's chosen people and that the, the mountains surrounding that area were going to help protect us from the from the airplanes coming in trying to bomb us and all that kind of stuff and um, it was very very like something that was talked about a lot that we had to be prepared for the day of the Lord, as he says. And, and and honestly, I mean, growing up, I was almost in constant fear of like, oh my gosh, this could be my last day or, you know. And so we were always, I, I mean, I look back now and it was a very, very obvious way to try to convince us to live a certain way. But um, anyway, so that's, that's kind of what he's referring to. Yeah. And that's, so that's the end of the proclamation to the government officials, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting because he's, you know, he's proclaiming, basically just saying, you guys are persecuting us when we're just doing the Lord's will. But overall, he doesn't really, like, he doesn't even try to make a case for himself as, like, why he shouldn't be incarcerated. Other yeah. than the fact of, like... And there must be more to what he wrote to the government officials. Because I remember reading a different one than this. This, is, this isn't this is the one that I actually remember reading. So, oh, okay. So there must be more than one that he sent out. Because I know that when he was sitting in prison... Well, he still is sitting in prison. But when he first was uh, incarcerated, he wrote several letters to the yeah. government and saying, Hey, you're, you, you need to let me out of here or God will destroy you. And, and like a lot of different things like that. So yeah, he has some other like warning of the Lord Jesus Christ to all nations. This is a different one. Mm -hmm. Warning of the Lord Jesus Christ through his servant Warren Jeffs to the United States of America. That might be. So yeah. we'll definitely get into yeah. some of these other ones. We a want lot, to be able to share a lot of these ones. A lot to come. And, uh, the, I mean, 
there's there's just so much here it's kind of crazy it's so such a unique experience to be able to look back at these um not necessarily uh, great but it's very interesting and i'm glad that um my sister-in-law had these saved because i would have i would have had no way of getting my hands on these okay so i'm going to pass this over for sam to read the revelation of the Lord given to President Warren S. Jeffs in dun, Kingman, Arizona. Dun, dun. <laughs> yes, so uh, Warren Jeffs was originally imprisoned in Kingman, Arizona because Kingman, Arizona is the closest town that has a prison, the largest town, um, to Colorado City, Arizona. And that's where a lot of the charges were coming from. That's where he went. Yeah, and it says it's Friday, October 2nd, 2009. And so as we go through this, um, we just kind of wanted to give you an idea of what the FLDS people would hear and what kind of like what a revelation sounded like when it was coming from the prophet as he was speaking and, and giving yeah. guidance to the people. So here we go. See if I can do this. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thus saith the Lord unto the people of this nation who call themselves the nation of the United States of America, founded upon the Constitution that I, the Lord, established through the inspired men who fought for and loved liberty for all mankind. Real quick before you go on any further, yep. um, when he's talking about I, the Lord, um, Warren just isn't trying to say that he is Jesus Christ. Right. He is just saying that he's speaking for Jesus Christ. Yep. So he believes that... He believes, and we were taught that everything that, like these revelations, he was literally speaking with the Lord Jesus Christ and writing down what what Jesus Christ was telling him. That's that's what we were told. Yeah, but just yeah. to clarify, so you're gonna hear that it's gonna be spoken in a form that's not yeah not he's not more claiming. He's talking for Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ. Yep. and so the whole thing's written as if it is from Jesus Christ. Okay, I, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, have looked upon the people of this nation and have seen their abominations and gross wickedness and their murders and secret combinations and have seen the wickedness in high places among the rulers of the nation. The fact that he says secret combinations for like the outside world, like when there's so many secrets about the FLDS and he's keeping like such yep. a confined, secretive community about everything and yet he's like... All the other people out there, they have their secret combinations, and that's what makes them so wicked. And that's why they're wicked, because they're so secretive. Yeah. Well, we were told, and this is what this is what I believed growing up, is that everyone that was, I guess, all the outsiders, everyone that wasn't a part of the FLDS, were in some way trying to gain up against the FLDS church to overthrow them. And so they had all of these evil secrets that they were getting through Satan's power to come in and attack God's church. And that's kind of what we were told. And so that's where he's, that's where this is coming from here. Do you think he, he would have had to realize, because I mean, he traveled to different parts and there were groups in Canada and mm -hmm. stuff. What a small group that is to think that they are so, I don't want to use the word significant because that sounds mean, but so like important. Yeah. That they're mm -hmm. so important when most people in the world as proven through this YouTube channel yeah. had never even heard of the FLDS will never hear of the FLDS because they're such well, they a will small, now. well, they will now, but <laughs> such a small group compared to the world compared right. like most people are never even going to know about them, hear about them, ever yeah. care about them. And so to think that like, they actually the whole world's gonna go against them. <laughs> yeah, uh, Warren Jess actually used the the small in number at, to hit a, to his advantage in convincing people that he was that he was a prophet because he would say that uh, in the last day it's told in the scriptures that the people that are actually faithful and remain faithful to the end will be a very very small number of people that will actually be able to prove themselves all the way to the end of the, of the days. So. That he kind of used that as a hey, this is this is why we're so few in number because we are the chosen ones. We're the only ones that have been able to be faithful. Well, there so, you go. That's that's good. Us, us out here in all of our secret combinations. <laughs> okay. And I say unto you, repent or be destroyed in the flesh, for I, the Lord, have weighed you in the balance and found this nation wanting, even unto their cup of iniquity, full and running over. And I feel like that's a pretty typical, like, scriptural thing to say. Like, yeah. repent or you're going to be destroyed. Yeah. Repent or be destroyed. It says that in the scriptures a lot. Mm -hmm. 
I, the Lord, created this earth and, re and preserved this land upon which this nation of the United States of America now exists for a wise purpose in me, even to establish my Zion. So there's the word Zion. Yeah, I was just going to say, explain what Zion means in general and like what it means specifically to the FLDS. Right. So it would Zion is a not only a physical place, but a state of mind. And they... Zion is a is a place they long to be. It is a place where everyone lives in harmony. Everyone follows the teachings of Jesus Christ perfectly. Everyone is in this beautiful, perfect state. So they'd consider it like heaven on earth, right? Exactly. Like you're striving for heaven on earth to mm -hmm. be prepared for when Jesus Christ comes. He has somewhere to come to that is... To, 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 Already gre established. to greet his people and be welcomed back to the earth. And that's also a term that's used um, in the LDS church as well and actually comes from Joseph Smith. And it's interesting that he says um, he created this earth, preserved this land of the United States. And that's something that Joseph mm -hmm. Smith did teach was that right. the United States of America, because of its um, ability to have religious freedoms, mm -hmm. was specifically saved for Zion. Like Zion will be in the United States of America because of its religious freedom. Right. Yeah, and that's, uh, yeah, he, uh, Joseph Smith, and, or sorry, uh, the FLDS Church believes full heartedly in Joseph Smith as a true prophet as well. So a lot of the teachings that Joseph Smith taught, they also believe in. So obviously tweaked them a little bit here and there, but, <laughs> but they have the teachings. Okay. And I, the Lord, established my church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints upon this land through my servant Joseph Smith, Jr., to fulfill my purposes to gather mine elect unto the redemption of Zion. So there Confirmation we go. Confirmation. There we right. go. <laughs> and this nation has persecuted and driven my people and brought upon the persecutions against my people through laws that were unconstitutional. So the laws they're referring to, like... Mostly when they're saying unconstitutional, it's normally the laws of polygamy, yeah. saying that um, they should have had the right to religious freedom and to, that because polygamy is part practice. of religion, mm -hmm. um, those are the unconstitutional laws, that the, those laws should never have been put in place because it infringes right. on their religious rights. Exactly. That's true. And, uh, and they believe they have been wrongfully accused for... Everything. Way back to Joseph Smith. Wait, see, <laughs> way back to Joseph Smith with the with the things that he was thrown into prison for. They would say are the same things that uh, jo that Warren Jeffs is thrown into prison for. Obviously, we know that's not true, but that's what the followers of Warren Jeffs would say. Yeah, and they compare him to Joseph Smith a lot. Yep. Like, you no, know, oh, he's got you know wrongfully sent to prison um, by people who are trying to destroy him, things mm -hmm. like that. You know, so. And if he dies in prison, they'll say, see. Same as Joseph Smith. He's a martyr. Just He's like a Joseph martyr. Smith. That's what they'll say. Yeah. For the rights of freedom of religion, I, the Lord, inspired the founders of this nation to guarantee and preserve for all classes and lawful organizations to maintain their rights of worship. So, so yeah, definitely it's, yeah, they think they should have that. But it is interesting that he does say um, to preserve lawful organizations. Uh, yeah, he, he considers himself lawful. So, uh, and, uh, Obviously, we'll read on and we'll get into more of this, but he thinks he thinks he's being lawful because he believes that he is standing up to God's law, which he would say is greater than the law of the land. Yep. So, and thus saith the Lord, my judgment shall now come upon you as you continue to persecute my people who are of my church and kingdom upon the earth. So kingdom upon the earth is kind of a similar thing to Zion yeah. uh, it's the, or the people of, of, of God. And I say unto you, let my people go and allow them their rights and privileges of worship to establish my Zion upon the lands that my people have purchased and consecrated unto me. So that's the first time that he like actually declares like, you know, let us Do go. Do this or else. But again, mm -hmm. it's all in the context of it's Jesus Christ saying it, right? right? So let my people go. Jesus is saying, let my people go. Right. For I, the Lord, am with them, and as they abide in their covenants with me, in living the laws of God, which are always more pure than the laws of man unto the salvation of souls. Yeah, we had a recent comment. Someone was asking about the relationship with like the laws and the laws on polygamy. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was responding with the fact that like they, 
it, to them, as long as they're following God's laws, it doesn't matter what the laws of the land are. Right. You know, they're always going to do that because they believe that if, as long as they're living God's laws, that's the higher law, they will be blessed in this life. Or even if it makes this life harder, in the case blessed. of polygamy being illegal, it's all about the blessings in the next life. So it's not always meant to be necessarily like... Yeah. Happy here, you know, as long as you endure to the end, then you'll get your reward in the next life. Exactly. They didn't teach much about happiness and uh, joy in this life. That wasn't really something that they would talk much about. It was more, this is just a test. We just have to make it through this. We have to prove ourselves to be faithful. And then in the next life is where all of the blessings come. And mm. we will be promised to have every blessing you can possibly imagine if we can be faithful. So... They try to focus on the next life, not so much this life. For my people only desire to fulfill my purposes of salvation for mankind who come unto me, and this through my revealed words. And I, the Lord, shall fulfill my promises and uphold my word as revealed through all my holy prophets as recorded in the scriptures. And just to kind of reiterate again, um, for those of you who aren't familiar, the FLDS you know, when he's talking about the prophets, he's not just talking about the prophets of the Bible. He's talking about the prophets right. in the Book of Mormon, as well as all of the modern day prophets, starting at Joseph Smith Jr. and continuing down the lineage of prophets to Warren Jeffs, which does split off from the mainstream LDS prophets um, at Wilford Woodruff, mm -hmm. but still like between Joseph Smith and Wilford Woodruff and then continuing down to Warren Jeffs. So yep. that's a lot of prophets yeah um and all of them have different recorded like scriptures or things that they've said so there's definitely when he says the lord's going to fulfill his promises and uphold the word they're not just talking about the bible like what other I'm talking about Christian all religions of believe. the teachings in modern days as well and they believe to be scriptures yeah and now I say unto this nation, uphold the rights of worship of my people of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, known among you as the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, those who have received and are abiding my celestial laws. And they would call the celestial law is considered polygamy. Exactly. So those words, like, that's what that means when they say living the celestial yes. law, they're meaning polygamy. Right, yeah, the, yes. So celestial law... Polygamy and also being sealed through, um, the you know through the prophets and through the people that had the authority to do it is being what sealed was. to their spouses. Exactly. I guess that's true. Even if you weren't um, living polygamous, like right, a, because like, there were some people out men out there that only had one wife. Yeah, but, but they, if they were sealed through the prophet, they're still living the celestial right. law. And they would they were willing to be polygamists. But they, you know, but they were still considered, yeah, exactly, to be living the law as long as they were sealed through the proper channels. And as long as they were willing to be in a polygamous relationship, they still got credit as living the celestial law and, like, still being a polygamist, even if they weren't. Yeah. Yep. Even if they didn't have multiple wives, it was more of, like, a state of mind of, like, they're willing to, and this is how many wives they have assigned so far. Because it's always and because it was more. it wasn't up to them. They never got to choose who or when to get married. So, because it was completely up to the prophet, that was something they had no no say in the matter. Yeah, you know, they were just hoping that one day they were worthy enough to have a second or third or, you know, uh, wife or seventy fifth or. <laughs> if you're the prophet, if you're the prophet. Yeah, exactly. If you're if you're Warren Jeffs, then you get right. Uh, Isn't yeah, it in the seventies? Yeah. I think he ended up with about eighty at, at the. Right before he was thrown into prison, so yeah, I don't even know how you would keep track of everyone. I mean, he probably didn't. He probably was just you, you. Yeah, you. He, I don't even want to think about what he was doing. But for that branch called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, known by the world as the um, known by the world, has become corrupt and broke away from my priesthood authority. And they rejected my celestial law of marriage, and I, the Lord, have rejected them. Ooh. Ooh so there, he's throwing mad shade. This is directly <laughs> at the LDS, at the church. LDS <laughs> church, not the FLDS. The LDS church. He's saying, okay, they broke away. They are no longer living the celestial law, which is polygamy. Which is polygamy, and he even says, I, the Lord, have rejected them. So harsh words Yeesh. against the. LDS, mainstream LDS, or what a lot of people know as Mormons, um, or like you said, the the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, as it's known now. Um, 
yeah, that it's become corrupt. So that wow. was that's crazy that he called it out so like. And that's pro- pro- probably why growing up out there, I thought that the mainstream LDS church was such a bad church because of this type of thing that we were told. Little did you know. <laughs> And they shall be brought low and feel the chastening hand of God for all their abominations against the laws of God. Once again, that is directed towards the LDS church. And I say unto this people of this nation, repent ye, repent ye, for my judgments are already upon you. And you will soon be and will soon be poured out without measure, beginning at the house of God. Those who have professed to know my name and have um, blasphem, blasphemed, blasphemed. (laughs) <laughs> That's a hard Thanks. word <laughs> against me and changed the law and ordinances of my gospel and submitted to the ways and uh, persuasions of man. He once again is, is uh, aiming this towards the LDS church. Yeah. And when I say, and when I say uh, little did they know, I mean, little did you know at this point, like that you were going to be LDS I and later, later would join. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah, he's being really harsh against anybody who, you know, already when you leave, you're already considered an apostate. But then to go and to join this church mm-hmm. is like double blasphemy, right? right? Yes, and I remember uh, I wanted my father to know when I when I was considering joining the L- the LDS church, and so I I was I was terrified to go and tell him, but I felt like I should. And um, anyway, it actually turned out to be a a good experience, but he didn't. He didn't disown me any more than I was already. <laughs> I was already. Um, anyway, moving on. O ye people of this nation, I the Lord shall soon bring upon you the overflowing scourge, and who can stay my hand? For this land shall be cleansed for the rise of Zion in fullness. And I say unto you, restore to my people their, their lands and houses, and deliver my people from the, land, from the hand of their oppressors. This from the Lord your God, who created you, and who upholds all nations and peoples in their place, even so. Amen. And yeah. that is the revelation. Yeah, and when they're talking about restoring the people their land and their houses, for those of you who aren't familiar with that, um, Warren Jeffs had told everyone to stop paying their property taxes. Yep. And so what ended up happening is all the, a ton of the properties in that area um, were getting foreclosed on for mm-hmm. not having paid their property taxes. And so it was quite the mess, honestly. We went out kind of in yeah. the middle of it, and there were a lot of people like living in huge in white tents, tents and things, um, yeah. because these people were being kicked out of their homes because the prophet had told Excuse them me. not to pay their taxes. Um, and I, yeah, it was just, it was a huge fiasco. It was a huge deal. It was super, super sad because these people are just doing what they believe their prophet is telling them to do, and the prophet's saying, no, they don't have any right to do this, but the government did have the right to do it, and they did it, and it misplaced right. or displaced a lot of people and a lot of families and a lot of like women and children, too. Yeah, so what what, what kind of a little bit of backstory, what happened with this is the, the uh, town where I grew up, the Hilldale, on Utah side, Hilldale City, on Arizona side, uh, Arizona or um, Colorado, Colorado City. It was like one town, but it was right on the border. So it was owned by the UEP Trust. And after Warren being thrown into prison and then, and the government realizing all the corrupt things that were happening and all the bad that was happening, they took over the trust. And so it was then owned by the government. So at that point, everyone that was living there was required to then start paying property tax. And that's why they said, and that's why they said, no, don't pay it. Don't do it. Cause they're, they're taking this away from us. It's our land. They shouldn't be able to do this. So don't pay the taxes. Yeah. And there were some families that still did, but it was like a major, it was a huge deal if you did pay them because you were going against the profit. Mm-hmm. And then if you didn't pay them, then you were getting kicked out of your home. So right. for these people who did believe that like, the prophet speaking for God and his law is higher than 
the land's law. Mm -hmm. um, it put them in quite the predicament, and they really had to kind of like pick which side they were on. In their mind, it was the Lord's side versus the world side. And um, like I said, it was really sad because it was definitely devastating for a lot of families, yeah. and it was 100% because Warren Jeffs was leading them astray. And was telling them to do something that they but, shouldn't. But they, you know, believing that he is a man of God and speaking for God, they they did what, did what he told them to do. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. anyway, that was <laughs> uh, kind of a longer video for us. But Revelation mm -hmm. of the Lord, just to kind of get an idea of what the people out there were hearing and the type of things that they were, you know, a lot of fear, a lot of destruction, a lot of, you know, repent or you'll be destroyed. Yeah, there was definitely no beating around the bush. It was very direct. Yeah, and just, I mean, oh, just, go ahead. No, just you have to live this way or else. And that was, I mean, it was very straightforward and uh, scary. Yeah, and when he's, <laughs> obviously when he's writing his one that was to, you know, the government officials, people in, you know, government officials of the United States of America are going to see this and they're not going to take this seriously. They're going to be like, this guy, they know what he did. Mm -hmm. They know why he's in prison. They're going to be like, he's sending us this random thing. We don't care. They're going to ignore it. But those same words to people that he's already groomed and believe in him as a prophet and believe in everything he's saying coming from Jesus Christ, like hopefully you can kind of see a little bit of why he had so much control right and how it was just so easy to be manipulated by him yeah well and if you're born into it you know there weren't there weren't many that converted you know there it, there were a couple there were people that converted to the not FLDS but not very many so for most of them being born into it and raised in it their entire life that's that's all they know you know and so that's they're they're obviously going to believe it and and uh, unless they have a reason not to but normally that doesn't come until you're quite a bit older and you can start experiencing more things and life outside of that. So. Yeah, absolutely. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, we love to do videos on people's questions. Yes. <laughs> and if you want to hear more about what it was like for Sam to grow up in polygamy, then please like and subscribe. And thank you. We'll, we'll uh, talk to you soon. Thanks. We'll talk to you soon.